got him. He's 36, six foot one, 182 pounds, current address 451 Shannon Court. in this house? Listen to me, okay? We need your help in this very urgent. Okay, where's your husband right now? He's working. Where? Where does he work? Uh, he's uh, downtown for at Vista Medical Center. He, he's a he's a med tech. Okay, what time did he leave here this morning? Phillips. Phillips. Oh, what the hell is this about? Ma'am, you're not gonna want to hear this in front of your kids. Tree TV. Black tree, all right? All right. What's up, man? Uh, yo, it's been a long time of me being a, a fan of your movies. I mean, oh, you. You know, all the way back to the Boys of the Hood, you running down the alley to, <laughs> to now. <laughs> right, right. It's just great to see you like continue to have like all these great parts and continue to, and, and be busy. You know. It's, Thank it's, you, man. It's, yes, it's, it's good to see that. Thank you, man. No, it's it's tough, man. It's a, it's a blessing from God, and I just want to thank all the fans out there because uh, without them, I, I wouldn't be here. And uh, I'm just blessing, man. And knock on wood. Hopefully, I'll be around another. You know, 20 something years. Yeah, you got a lot of great movies coming out, especially this one, The Call. Right, right, right. And I guess my, my first question is did they actually pay you for that scene when you had to hug Halle Berry? You know, like that? I like, paid them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They were saying, <laughs> <laughs> they said, yeah, we want to. Um, I said, I want $80 million for this movie. It's like, well, we're going to be in when Halle gets to kiss her. I'll pay you the $80 million. <laughs> now, nah, you know, it's just one of those things, man. Um, Halle's just so sweet, so genuine, so down to earth. And. A lot of times, you never know what to expect when you're working with with actresses or and even actors. You know, right. sometimes people are just starting out and they have huge egos, and sometimes people have been in, in the game for a minute and they have huge egos. So you never know what to expect. But she was so sweet and so down to earth that uh, you know it just made it easy. Right. Now, did you learn something from from this movie as an outsider? Because I know the the writer said that what inspired him was seeing this documentary on call centers and what goes on and mm. I never knew what, what went on. I mean, just from playing in this, did you like, did it open your eyes to what's on the other end of that 911? Well, one of the things, just seeing the movie and just obviously reading the script, but seeing the movie, it really opened my eyes to what a 911 operator has to go through. A lot of times people don't really think about that person on the other line when they call 911 being a person and having emotions. It's, we, and whenever you call 911, you have a huge issue that you want them to resolve. Yeah. But it's the actual person that you're dealing with. So, it's, you know, that person has emotions and they have to be calm and, and collected in those types of situations. As well as when I, um, to, to research my role as a police officer, I went on a ride along mm. with some actual police officers. And that really opened my eyes because just seeing how, you know, people in the neighborhood respond to patrol officers when they're in that car. Yeah. Some people are happy to see them and some people have a lot of animosity toward them, towards them. So it's, uh, it was definitely high open. Yeah. And, a, and a, another group of people that got to deal with emotions of, of their job and have to try to take that home, I mean. Without a doubt, without, sometimes, you, yeah, you try to leave it, you try to leave it, you know, you try to leave it at the door. When you come into the house, leave it at the door and try to deal with your family, but it's tough because, you know, these people are people, you know, they're humans and they have uh, human emotions, human thoughts, human feelings, so it's hard to just, you know, throw it away once you walk through the door. And it's not a scary movie, it's, it's, it's a it's an action thriller, but, you know, just seeing women in those predicaments it's, it's hard not to just be like really emotionally going through it with seeing a woman and little girl in the trunk and stuff you know I think this movie does a lot just to open the awareness of some of the violence that happens against women without a doubt I think this one this movie is, uh, is somewhat of an empowerment for women because you see you know the vulnerability of even Hallie's character at the beginning and the emotion that she goes through and then you see I don't want to give it away but you see what happens at the end of the movie and the strength that she and Abigail's character find to overcome evil. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a testament to just, just the, their strength as women. Right. So we've seen you in Identity Thief. We know you got Best Man yeah, reprising yeah. that. So I right. mean, can you give us any any tidbits about when y'all going to shoot that and when, it, when it's... When right. We start shooting The Best Man uh, next month. And it's going to be... It's going to be a good movie. It's 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 uh, it's going to take you through the gamut of emotion. I mean, this the call. You're very suspenseful, and you know you're, you're anxious, and you and um, and you're optimistic. Hopefully, but with the best man, you're gonna you know you're gonna laugh, and you know people are gonna cry, 
and then uh, they're gonna hopefully laugh again. So it's uh, we're gonna run you through the whole gamut of emotion with the best man. All right, well you keep on doing your thing. We'll keep Thank on watching. You. I appreciate it.